Assalamu alaikum everyone I wanted to apologize for this video because I was filming and it was raining so much so it's a blessing to have all this rain and I will leave it also this video like this it will bother you a little bit but inshallah in the middle of the video the rain will stop and you can enjoy it so just enjoy to watch it and thank you so much Assalamu alaikum everyone, welcome back to my channel with another reaction video. Today I'm gonna react to 10 biggest misconceptions about Islam. So, this was recommended in my Instagram. Sometimes I ask people to, to go to my Instagram and to give me ideas what to do, what to react to, but you can also do in the co comments below. You can uh, suggest me whatever you want that I react or also other videos, other kind of videos. So yeah, but this one is a reaction video, so let's go. Let's start. So bismillah. Like any group, whether religious or not, there will be misconceptions by others when it comes to certain beliefs, practices, and overall goals of that group. Islam is no exception to this. And to continue our episode series exploring the religion of Islam, here are 10 biggest misconceptions about Islam. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of FTD Facts. My name is Leroy Kenton. And for this video, I'm gonna point out some of the biggest misconceptions about Islam and share with you information Information based on Muslim sources. I'll be stating the misconception and then stating the actual beliefs and facts associated with it. So be sure to watch this video from 10 all the way down to number one so you don't miss any of them. Now starting at number 10, Muhammad created the religion of Islam. Also there's another belief that Muhammad is worshipped by Muslims but generally speaking Muslims believe that Muhammad was God's last prophet and communicated God's final revelation to all of humanity. Muslims consider Adam the first human to be the first Muslim though and Muhammad is seen as an example of how to be a good Muslim but he is not to be worshipped. Worship is only for God and it is forbidden to worship anyone or anything else other than God. One of the biggest misconceptions about Muslims is that they do not believe in Jesus at all all. Jesus, also referred to as Isa in Islam, is a highly respected prophet and mus- I have to stop. Um, actually, this is not allowed in Islam to show pictures of the Prophet Islam, and also about Adam and Jesus Islam. So, but other thing, this is really true. People, they don't know that we believe in Jesus Islam, Isa, and um, this is because I was a, a Christian, so when I convert, it was that thing like, you will don't, you will not believe in Jesus, and yeah, people, we do believe in Jesus, and he said, um, and actually I find it really beautiful that we always say, salam, peace be upon him, to all the prophets, also also Jesus, so we respect so much these prophets and it's so beautiful, so yeah, we do believe in Jesus in Islam. The Islamic tradition believes that Jesus is going to return as the Messiah and defeat the Dajjal, which is known as the false Messiah. Muslims also believe that Jesus was born of a virgin birth and he doesn't have any earthly father and that he did great miracles. There's even an entire surah in the Quran titled the name Miriam, which is Mary in Arabic, that details some of the info relating to Jesus in Islam. Another misconception about Islam is that Sharia law is evil and it's old, it's archaic, it should not be in the world at all. But Muslims believe that Sharia law or Islamic law is about protecting the innocent people and upholding Islamic values. So this includes things like praying and fasting during the month of Ramadan, things like that. Also Sharia law... Yeah, everything. Everything is Sharia law. How we do everything. Uh, is not about extreme punishments for little simple offenses. Where the confusion is, is that the punishments for offenses during the early Islamic period, they seemed very, very cruel. However, the Islamic laws of that period were believed by Muslims to be well above the pre-Islamic Arabia. Also, according to the religious scholar Paul McNamara, he says this, there's no need for such harsh punishments to rehabilitate a person. This understanding did not exist in the early Islamic society 
society and for that matter did not exist in any society during the antiquity period. So Muslims again believe that Sharia law is simply a law that helps govern society. Although yes, there have been some harsh punishments associated with Sharia law. This is often compared to any other country that has severe... Also for divorce and marriage and uh, how to treat everything. Like everything is Sharia law and harsh punishments How for certain stop? crimes. The next misconception we're going to look at is that the moon and the star is a symbol of Islam. Although the symbol is used and it's viewed like it is, the early Muslim community, however, did not really have any symbol to represent them. Now, one thing to note is that the crescent moon and the star symbols, it's believed that they actually predate Islam by several thousand years and it wasn't really affiliated with Islam at all until the Ottoman Empire placed it on their flag. And over time, the symbol started to become become more associated with Islam. And the next big misconception to highlight is Muslims live in the Middle East. Now this is a huge misconception because most Muslims, over 1 billion of them, live in Asia. Also, Indonesia. more than 300 million Muslims live in Sub-Saharan Africa. Now, the four largest Muslim populations in the entire world go to the countries of Indonesia, India, Pakistan, and Bangladesh. Each of them are home to more than 100 million Muslims. Yeah. And I think even like Pakistan has 99% of Muslims, if I am not wrong. If I am wrong, you can just comment below to correct me but I think so uh, but I think Indonesia it's the largest yeah the majority of the people who live in North Africa and the Arabian Peninsula as well as Southwest Asia are also Muslim, but they only make up about 20% of the global Muslim population. Alright guys, so while we're on the topic of highlighting some misconceptions about Islam, we actually did another video that highlights 10 haram or forbidden things in Islam. That also helps clarify certain misconceptions as well. I'll have the link to that video below in the video description section. I definitely want you to check it out because we have a lot more information about certain things that are forbidden and why they're forbidden in the religion of Islam. So definitely check it out. It is definitely an eye-opener. For number five, another misconception that's similar to number six. All Muslims are Arabs. Well, Islam is often associated with Arab people, but the fact of the matter is that Arabs make up around 15% of all Muslims. So like I mentioned, most Muslims are in Asia and the actual country with the largest population population of Muslims is Indonesia, which stands at approximately 225 million people. Also, the population of Iran totals about 82 million people, and Iranians are Persians, not Arabs, and most of the Iranian population are Muslims. So yeah, Arabs don't even make up anywhere near the majority of Muslims in the world. The next misconception to look at is Muslims are either Sunni or Shia. Like Christians and other religions, there are different sects and branches of Islam. The two major and most well-known branches are Sunni and Shia, but there are many other subgroups with different teachings and different practices. Also, there are different... I think in this kind of thing is, um, is a good answer of Dr. Zakir Naik that he say that in the Quran there is no mention of Shia or 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 Sunni or whatever, all these kind of groups. Um, a lot talks about being a Muslim, right? So, yeah, this is important. Of course, like we have to follow the Sunnah of the Prophet, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and uh, this is, and we have to know the authentic hadiths and everything. So this is really important. The Quran and the authentic hadiths of the of our Prophet and to follow it, to to do the sunnah of the Prophet. But all this kind of of groups, I don't know, like hmm you know hmm different Islamic schools of thought and law. There are Muslims though that hold the view that other groups who call themselves Muslims aren't actually Muslims, but that in itself is just one belief. Some other notable Muslim branches are Sufis and the Nation of Islam. Number three, I had to put this one in this episode, Jihad. The meaning of the Arabic word Jihad is struggle. It usually means a struggle of one's own soul against sinful desires. So it doesn't mean holy war in the sense that Muslims are warring against 
humanity. This type of struggle or jihad is to ensure that peaceful communities continue to exist on the planet. Of course, self-defense, if someone is attacking your home, your community, or your nation is acceptable to protect yourself. However, offensive aggression is prohibited completely in Islam. The misconception at number two is Muslims don't tolerate other religions. Some who claim to be Muslims can at times be very forceful in their beliefs and how they talk about other religions. Muslims actually hold the view that they are not the only ones who worship God. Jews and Christians, for example, are called people of the book in Islam, meaning that they are people who previously had received revelations from God. Also, when we look at the Quran in Surah 2 verses 256, it says, there is no compulsion in religion, meaning do not force anyone to become Muslim, for Islam is plain and clear. And the final misconception we're going to look at in this episode is Islam oppresses women. Sadly, most of the oppression of women by Muslims that is publicized in the news is due to local customs and traditions. Muslim women have been presidents though, as well as prime ministers of nations, and violence and aggression towards them and forcing them against their will is not prohibited in Islam. Muslims are to care for widows and orphans and the poor, as well as treat their women with great respect. The Prophet Muhammad also taught people to be very friendly with their wives and even stated that wives should actually be their husband's best friends. In one hadith, it says the following words. The Prophet said, the best of you are those who are the best to their wives, and I am the best of you to my wives. Unfortunately though, many Muslim women have been oppressed. However, this is is a major issue that goes beyond just being oppressed by other Muslims. Abuse towards women is not any higher among Muslims than among other people. I want to say something about this. It's that we we just focus on oppression in the Muslim community, but there are so many people they are oppressed. Like, so many women out there, they are oppressed, and they are not Muslims. They are Christian, they are atheists, they are Jewish, they are whatever, whatever. It's from everywhere in the world. So we cannot say that, oh yeah, okay, they are oppressed because they just wear the veil, or they just wear modesty, or, you know, like, this is all so bad. <laughs> because. I know so many people, and I talk about uh, about myself, my family, that they were so bad, like the women were so bad treated. So, this all kind of thing like, oh she is wearing hijab, she is wearing like this because she is oppressed. You don't, ha you don't need to wear like this to be oppressed, or to be mishandled, or you know, like, treat it bad. You don't need to. Different religions or no religions at all. At the end of the day, we should strive to continue to show respect to anyone regardless of their beliefs and their genders. So that wraps up this episode. This was a look at 10 of the biggest misconceptions about Islam. Really hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I know there's a lot of information at you, but I definitely want to hear your thoughts and comments about anything that I shared. Leave those down below. Don't forget to check out the recommended video that I have for you. That link is below in the video description section. Watch it. Let me know what you think about that one as well. And I can't wait to see you guys next time in the next episode when we talk about another topic. Who knows what that's going to be. All right, guys. See you soon. Good. Yeah. So this was, this is really 10 biggest misconceptions. <laughs> this is really true. People, they think like that. And I don't know, like, I never thought about something like this, about any religion or any tradition and doesn't matter what. Yeah, I don't like to judge people about stuff, but people they like to judge and they don't like to learn, they don't like to... I, I talk because I saw so much, especially when I became Muslim, so but alhamdulillah, um, yeah, but I, I saw so many things. And uh, people, they just talk what they think, but they don't even ask, they don't even want to know.
just like this. But I hope Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala change their minds and make them understand that it's okay to be a Muslim and actually we feel so proud and so happy Alhamdulillah thanks God that we are Muslims so yeah to all the Muslims out there just really courage and we got this <laughs> and Allah is with us always Alhamdulillah so so yeah it was really interesting video and thank you so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe and also leave a like and a comment if you would love to and go to my instagram to follow me there because i post everyday normally stories so yeah thank you so much and see you in the next video inshallah